Welcome back to the Team Faxel Bomb Show. This is episode 73 of the program. And this is how I look and sound today after a week of not doing this show. It is a weekly show, and every week I am getting noticeably older sounding. I sound like I'm in my 70s at least, and I like that. I'm getting older sounding. I can't help it. I wasn't even trying to do that. I just came up with this old-timey voice naturally over the course of many years of getting older. I do many voices that are not quite based in reality, but the reality is I ain't stopping doing them. I ain't going to stop doing something that I can't control. The boat has left the harbor. I am a person that does weird voices, whether you like it or not. We are coming to you in 4K this episode. Did I mention that? No, I didn't. I mentioned what episode number it was. I do that for some stupid re- I like to mention the number of the episode they were on so that people know that, hey, this is this number episode. Who gives a crap? I guess because I like to, it's like a documentary. It's like a documentary. And now my voice is changing to something different. Now it's here. What is this? Where'd this come? What is this voice? It's an old voice. They're all old. And my voice feels messed up and like particularly even more degraded than normal and i'm not i'm not even sick i don't have nothing wrong i'm perfectly it's not allergies i don't have any symptoms of allergies the only thing is my voice sounds like extra old and degraded and not good well I, I'm not saying it sounds not good i'm saying that it's like it's take it's weird it just sounds like uh, more rustic, like it's been through a lot. And it hasn't. All that's happened is that I haven't been using my voice. I think the last time I talked to somebody, it was, only, it was a couple days ago, and I had to prepare for that even. I had to prepare for a meeting because that's, that's nerve-wracking. I was like, am, am I going to be able to... Am I going to be able to talk? Usually I can't talk. So I had to do vocal exercises just for a meeting. Hey, and it went... eh, eh. Who cares how it went? It was my meeting. I wasn't trying to impress anybody. They were trying to impress me and they failed. They failed. Am I too loud? Am I close enough? To, am I far away enough from the microphone? I can't tell because the waveform is, com- is, is, too, is too slow. I'm zoomed out. All right, th- let's get into the episode, baby. So like I said, we're coming to you in 4K because I wanted to really document and, you know, I want people to really see what I look like in depth. I haven't got... Also, I got the headphones on because I just wanted to show... No, it's not that I wanted to show anything. It's that I looked at how I looked at them without them. I was like, ugh. I don't like the way I look without these headphones. The headphones make me look like everything's going okay. Like, the headphones kind of match the under bush, the underlying brush that it's trying to cover up. Not bush. Not bush. You don't call facial hair and long hair that word. But my hair and facial hair my head hair it's just getting very long and without the headphones it looks off it looks grave like something bad is happening when i saw myself in the mirror i was like that's what you look like jam keep put the and i put the headphones on and they're so big they, they, you know these are pretty large goofy looking headphones so they protrude enough to make me look like a character. So it's like, oh, okay, he's a character. He's like Princess Leia with those earmuffs on. I'm not using them for anything else other than to hear exactly how much noise my mouth is making uh, as I'm talking. I, I did drink enough. I drank a lot of tea before this. My mouth is not lubricated anymore because that was five minutes ago. Okay. Great start of the episode. Okay, is that enough to get it going into the deep topics? Yes, sure, why not? I don't know. So I've I've, I've, 
We're not going to do a sober update this episode because I don't really have anything new. I mean, I'm do I uh, I'm still doing uh, everything perfectly in terms of sobriety. I mean, yeah, you know, not perfect, but whatever. It's boring. I'm doing fine. I haven't done anything super that I feel guilty about. But even if I did, even if I did, sometimes you get addicted to the guilt, the feeling of doing something. Uh, impulsive, like acting on an impulse that you know is unhealthy. I kind of like that, and I don't get shame from. I don't get. The, I don't get shame if I do something that's a guilty pleasure. Like a couple weeks ago, I had McDonald's. I didn't feel any guilt from it whatsoever, even though I completely strayed from my diet, which is to usually be on a, a low carb, ketogenic diet. That's like the opposite of that, you know, uh, chicken nuggets and, and, uh, and the, whatever else I had, nothing too, it's not like I had like liquid, sh- like uh, soda. Soda, I'd feel guilty because that just goes straight to your adipose tissue. It just, go, it just gets straight converted to fat. I don't know. I don't. I don't know, man. I, what do I know? I'm just following the trend, man. I'm just surfing. So anyway, I don't feel guilt when I do bad things to myself because you don't get much pleasure out of doing good things. Like you know, you, you just don't. If they're not, if you, if you're used to doing those good things, like if you're used to be to sticking to your regimen, it's like okay. Can I do something bad? That'll because you don't get that reward from just sticking to something. It's like okay, I'm on a streak of good behavior. Whoopee! Who's do I get a medal? Like what am I doing this for? I'm not doing it to feel healthy, am I? Is that it? You just to be health, just to feel okay, just to get out of bed easier and feel lighter and more like focused and like motivated. It's like I got drugs for that, man. It's like. If I want to feel motivated, I got drugs for that. I don't got to do hard work to get there. I'm a hard worker. I'm a little bit of a workaholic, but that's another drug. That's why they call it workaholic and not just something that's also catchy because there's nothing more catchy than that. Anyway, we're doing well. I'm yelling a lot, so I don't know. I could tell by the waveform that I'm yelling too much, and that's something I'm conscious about, because I'm my own producer. I can I'm very lean. I can't. I don't have a budget for this, for like another. Per- okay, I could. E- I could. I do. I do have a budget for this. It's. It's. I do have a budget for this. I just don't want to work. I. I don't have interns, because who would I pay to come out here and like do shit that I could just do myself. I could use an intern, but like, what? How do I? Who would want to do that? Anyway, we'll get more into that later. That reminds me of another uh, broadcaster to put. Uh, that reminds me of another influencer. Somebody that's. Anyway, we'll get more into that. Is that enough? Can we get into something real here? So I got a roof leak. I think we've been having a lot of El Ninos. Of things going like El Nino effects weather in Teje, in Tejas, in Texas. Uh, yeah, we've been having a lot of hail and heavy rain, and it's cool, man. I do like the danger of it, like the thought that like a grapefruit-sized piece of hail could just break through my house at any time. I like that. I like living in here for that reason. But the downsides is it causes damage that you got to repair. So here's the home improvement update. I live in my own uh, uh, purchased home, which means I am the one. Res- I'm the landlord, which sucks. Being your own landlord sucks. Unless you're like super rich and they just got people handling everything for you. Okay, I'm not there yet. I'm a, I'm at the worst place you could be landlord-wise. I'm a landlord for one dude that doesn't pay rent. And 
I don't know nothing about how to fix a leaky roof. So I got this roof. So I, I just noticed that after this big hailstorm, there's a tiny little spot of wetness in the ceiling. So I go, well, that's never happened. So I go, well, I, it, that indicates water accumulating. If it's enough to leak, to like actually be visible from the other side of the wall, of the ceiling, that's probably a s indication that, that it's probably going to get worse before it gets... It's not going to resolve itself, itself, usually. From what I... Just my ba my gut feeling is like, you probably will regret not looking into that. So I, I immediately got on the phone. Not the phone. I used Yelp. I had to eventually use the phone. I was contacting all these roofers as if, as if they were drug dealers. Like, yeah, man, you got something? You got it? Yeah, are you, are you available? What do you got? And then somebody else comes, swoops in and go... I'm available. Fuck that other guy. They go, oh, okay, I don't need you anymore. I got somebody who's willing to sell me their services. So I found, I, I used Yelp, which sends a bunch of, it blasts out this uh, message to like 10 businesses if you just need uh, any service. I didn't even mean to do that. I thought I unchecked that box. But then two seconds later, I get my inbox. I get all these emails back from roofers. Literally, five minutes later, they all go, yeah, give me your phone number. I got it. I got what you need. I got the, yeah, hit me up. And then I had, so I eventually just got, I called one or they called me. And they say legit, I don't know. All these companies, it's owned by like one person. But they have henchmen to actually do the job. God forbid. So they just, I don't know what the point of that. Like, obviously, you have to know what you're doing before you hire these people. But if I want to hire a roofing company, I want to hire the dude that is in charge. I don't want to just hire one of his dudes that is like a dude that just has a job. I want it to be his passion to fix. Anyway, I just like good quality, you know. But also, at this type of, with this particular, this type of service, you kind of want to get it done sooner. So they're gonna, they're gonna. I don't know what they're gonna do. That's the thing. They didn't really say what they're gonna do. They didn't give me a quote or nothing. They didn't ask for pictures. But they were the first one to, to respond at 8 p.m. on a Friday. So it's like you take what you could get. It's like you know, you take whatever cocaine or crack is available whatever drug you do if you really need the drug you take whatever is available it's not like i'm gonna be like oh no never i'm gonna let this leak get worse it's not like it would get that much worse i don't you know it's not it's, i don't think it's gonna rain tomorrow it might though you never know there's been rainstorms all it's very so you know I was, so that was a stressful thing that i'm i just want to get it. It, it might be nothing they might just go oh that just uh it's just not even worth my time. Thanks for calling me out here. It's just because the gutters overflowed or something. It's like you, you called me out here. It's not even my. I don't even. I'm not a gutter guy. Anyway, so they're gonna be like, this is not my problem. It's not something. But who cares, man? It's probably a, something that needs to be fixed. Even if it's a tiny little leak, I'd rather get it now before it turns into like a ten, twenty. $30,000 thing where my whole ceiling just caves in, that'd be bad. I don't think that's going to happen in the next couple of days because I was knocking on it. I was like seeing if it was like completely like mushy, like absorbing all this water and it was not mushy. The, the ceiling still had plenty of sturdiness to it. It's a new house. What does this house have any business? Who's this house? You know, it's got. I've got it inspected a couple times, and they said both times there's nothing wrong with this house. They did a good job, but it, I don't know, man. It's mediocre of a job. But I think it's because of the shingles. A couple shingles, I don't know, need to be replaced and just 
the, the, there's like a piece of the fan. There's like a place where there's this like inlet on the roof that needs to be sealed up. It's probably not going to be that big of a deal, but I'm expecting it to cost a lot. Just because. Anyway. This, like, I went in the attic. I couldn't see signs of nothing. Couldn't hear any dripping water. I shined a flashlight. But I couldn't go deep. In, I couldn't go to where the leak was. It was all the way in the back of the alley. I mean, attic. And it's all this insulation blocking. You'd have to walk over this snow this this deep insulation who the hell wants to do that and then worry about spider webs which is thankfully it's still not spider season yet i mean it is but it's not like infestation levels right now it, it, this is still like a bug free haven but a couple as soon as it hits like june july that's when the bugs infest this house so i'll be much more paranoid and won't be sleeping as well i'm ready anyway so i'm gonna be to, so that's the update on home improvement is that i gotta improve my home for the first time in a non uh non in a way that i have to do it or else it's gonna cause my my house to cave i don't know i really don't know if they're gonna even find anything wrong it's gonna go out oh, it's, it's dry now and I, don't, I mean, I guess there might be a hole. If they can't find a hole, then what the hell else could it be? A, like, what else could it be? The HVAC system leaking? There was nothing. There's just, it's just tubing. It's just ventilation. It's just that could not be the case. I wasn't. It wasn't even on at the time, so it wasn't that. It was a leak. It's a small leak. I'm gonna fix it. And after that, I'll just go right back to where I was, which is, okay, whoopee, I have a house that's not broken. That's the thing that sucks about being a landlord. It's like, okay, I went through all this time and spent money. What did I gain from it? Oh, my house is no longer broken? Well, I already had that. What did I gain from this experience? I gained nothing. It's like, oh. That's an upgrade. My house is back to where it was before. No. I don't know. But that's what that's the downside of, of, of storms. I, I don't know, man. I want this house to be sealed up. They don't... Why, why do they make houses out of stuff that could just be so easily broken? All this... Like, I was looking at the pieces of wood that make this house and all these nails hanging... Like, they did not do that good of a job, like, getting these things lined up. Like, there's this plank of wood that's kind of, like, away from... It's not making full contact. It's, there's, like, a gap in this piece of wood, this structural... And there's all these nails just half, you know, half hammered in. And I'm not impressed. And then you can see all this dirt over the in the in on the wood, this mud. I have... Cover the, the the beams that support the roof, they're permanently covered in mud because that's how it was when they were building this thing. It was super muddy because of another stupid storm, because of a nice storm, and then that melted, got all over the wood, and now I'm stuck with this muddy house. Who wants to have a house that's, that's all muddy on the inside, like the guts of the house? It's a muddy skeleton and that just makes me feel like this is shoddy who is low quality like they couldn't like hose it off a little they couldn't they couldn't clean the wood to make it nice and fresh now i got all this mud actually it's not the biggest deal it's just kind of like really like it's kind of cool i guess because it's kind of like a log cab it's like kind of rusticy but actually even uh, log cabins wouldn't have, like, mud. Why would they build a cab with muddy... They were just getting the job done so they could move on to the next job and never think about it ever again. It's somebody else's problem. So that's what owning a house is like for me. It's, it, it, it's like, okay, you spend all this money 
And then it just only gets worse. It doesn't, you got to maintain it, spend more money like a boat. And where do you make money? From renters? There should be a way to make money by living in a house, not by renting it out. You should get paid just for being a good neighbor. Just for being a good inhabitant of the house. Not for renting it and making other people deal with the the renters in the neighborhood blasting music, shooting off firework, and not mowing the lawn and not relacquering the the island, the, the countertops. You gotta relacquer them. You gotta relacquer these things. And then you gotta change every you gotta do other stuff. You gotta drain the water heater. You gotta you gotta drain the water heater every year. I haven't done that. You see you think I did that? You think I'm gonna go outside almost outside to my garage and and like mess with this thing? Go on YouTube and watch a four hour tutorial and ho- hope it doesn't blow up and then see if I get all the sediment out and drain it with a hose. I don't even have a hose. How am I going to drain this thing if I don't even got a hose? So I got to buy a hose. And then what do I do with the hose? After I'm done, I got to keep a hose awkwardly coiled up somewhere. I don't got a place to put a hose. Where do people put hoses? Got to get one of those crates or one of those, one of those things to put a hose on just for one thing I do a year? I don't got a garden. So that's obnoxious, man. Because if you to think about it, because a hose, if it's all coiled up in the corner in a place where you never go, it's just going to get infested with spiders. They love hoses, man. So I'm, st- I'm more stressed about the hose than the part where I got to drain out the thing. That part sounds kind of fun. And I know it's going to be filled with sediments because I don't got a one of those. Things I don't got a yeah, water treatment thing. What do you call that? I'm I can't even water softener. I have hard water and it's going every so anyway. Renters, renters, they wouldn't do that. What is the landlord going out and doing that in these house? I doubt it. You know, land these landlords are just. People that barely know what they're doing. In the, yeah, they bought the house. They look at it as an investment vehicle. And then they got to pay property taxes, which go up every year. So they better hope that they renters, they better hope it's profitable. It's not that glamorous. Being a, it's, it's, like, it's, it's very not glamorous to be a landlord, man. Being a renter sounds good now that I'm talking all this shit about it. Uh, the struggle of being a landlord. Anyway, that's enough on that boring topic of, of being a one-man show. I need to generate income in this house. What the hell's the point of this house if it's just going to get all all banged up by hailstorms every two days? What? How's it going to survive global warming, man? Whatever, it's not that bad, but yeah, I'm just, it's just a financial budgetary thing because I don't got money. I don't got my money to be burning on, on acts of God. You, you should get paid to wrap up this subject for not renting out your home in a community. You should get paid for good behavior in that community. Like if you have a good grass, good lawn, which I do. My lawn is like the best in the whole neighborhood because I have two lawn services. Because for some reason, I just got two of them. I was like, oh crap, I need to get somewhere to mow my lawn. So I got one, and then somehow I got two because I needed them urgently, and I just never canceled the second one. But also, they're doing a great job. I think one time they had to cancel because the other guy was already there. They're like, well, we couldn't make it. We went to your property and there's somebody already there. It's like, well, yeah, take your, you got to take turns, man. Got to coordinate with them. 
It's not my job to coordinate that. I'm just a guy paying you. Anyway, so I got a great I got a great lawn, and if I'm not getting any like reward for it, like what the you should get paid for just living in the house and minding your own damn business and not using it just as a investment vehicle. Hey, it's gross, man. All these empty houses. Well, it's not that they're not empty, I guess, if they're being if they're generating income, but some of them are empty and they're just literally just there to just hold value. Just hold value. And then sell it for a profit, which is not easy to do right now. The housing market is cold. It's freezing cold. The housing market. It's still expensive. But it's 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 not as crazy. It's not going up. It's only going down. It's still ex- very expensive to own a house these days. Like even in Alabama. It's like four hundred thousand dollars. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But anyway, it's not about housing problems. I I mean it's not that interesting, man. It's not. Tr- it's like I'm. It's, I'm trying to like make drama, and like I don't got drama. I'm not the type of person who finds, who like catches drama, and then amplify that shit. Ah, right, this tea is cold. Hey, anyway, I got my louder with Crowder mug. Almost said mud. I can't even say simple words. Jesus Christ. If I got my Louder with Crowder mug, I wonder how that guy's doing. I haven't checked into that guy in years. I haven't watched that show in years, man. It used to be cool to have a Louder with Crowder mug. Maybe in like the early 10s. It's not cool anymore. I don't know. I feel like a dork drinking out of this thing. I haven't used this thing. I, haven't, I had to bust this thing out of the cupboard. I don't use this mug. Now I am. Now I'm using this mug because it's in style. It's ironically funny to use this mug. It was embarrassing just a week ago. Just a week ago, this mug would have gotten me a lot of cringes. People go, Ugh, you used to be a, you're a fan of that guy? But now it's like, whoa, you're still a fan of that guy? That's funny. That's cool. I support that. Now maybe you're maybe I'm gonna buy your mug, and then I'll and then I'll forget about it. I'll keep it in my cupboard, and then I'll pull it out when you, ex- you know, get <laughs> get exposed for being a horrible, horrible man, for being a rude, abusive, narcissistic, control freak, emotional, controlling abuser of women who he's married to and to his co-workers what a douchebag that guy's a douche like i didn't mean i wasn't trying to like i was i told myself don't use any don't personally attack the guy just make fun of him don't call him names but it's like you can only go up i you can, i can only gain favor nah actually i i like i still like him i kind of i like i respect him for holding down the fort in men's rights territory he's he's like this is my house you're gonna use the only car in the whole house because we only have one car and you're gonna i don't know you're gonna walk the dog (laughs) i'm going to the store it's my house. You're pregnant. You're staying home. You're doing a wifely. Was it? Was that the word? Wifely uh, duties. That's the most. I, even for me, I'm like, ooh. You actually said that out loud. Wifely duties. That's the most. Like, yeah. If you have to say it, if you actually have to, like, yeah. That's why she wasn't the right fit. She wasn't. Why'd you marry her if she didn't understand that that was in the contract? You shouldn't even have to say it out loud. Wifely duties. That's like what you say to your kids. They're the ones who are just born into the family. The wife is the one that starts it with you. She should know her her freaking duties. 
This guy's out of control. Doesn't even know how to tell these these women that he's marrying. Hey, there's one car and I'm using it anytime I want. You can stay here, walk the damn dog, and then go do your women stuff when I'm done getting my pellets for my grill. My grill ain't gonna have pellets in it itself. It ain't a, it ain't gonna produce pellets. I need to go to the store like a man and get manly products for my pellet grill, which it turns out are pellets, because it's a pellet grill. So I'm yelling way too loud for how close the mic is. Sorry for that. Let me make a quick... I'm sorry for that. I did not think I would be yelling that much. Anyway, I, I, I'm a man, and you're a woman, and you're pregnant, and your belly's hanging out very visibly, and we're recording it. I don't care. I'm abusive. I'm abusive. Okay. So anyway, that's why I don't like him. I don't like that. <laughs> that's not good communications. Like, s- skills, it's good communication. He's, he's doing a good job of communicating what he wants, but... It's not a good way to do it. He should have been like more calm. Like he was freaking out of that in that leaked video from his security camera, which I don't know how the hell like from the lawyers or something. Why would he just this guy? This guy does not think this guy's out of control. If you're gonna be abusive to your wife, come on, you know. How does he not have the foresight? Like, I don't know. Emotional intelligence. This guy don't got. This guy don't got emotional intelligence. He don't got empathy. How about that? He's a narcissist. What a douchebag. Alright. That's enough on Steven Crowder. I'm still going to dr- use this mug. As memorabilia for how I used to be in his fan club. It was cool. It used to be cool. It used to be cool. Never. It was never cool. To be in this fan club. I don't know why the hell I got it. I guess. I really. I'm trying to remember what it. why I got it. I didn't care about the content. I think I literally just wanted the mug. Because like oh that's a cool mug. But then you get it. And it's, it says right on the. It says made in China. What a fraudster. He's selling a mug that has all the American colors on it. A dude that's proud of being an American. That's his whole thing. It is like America first. We're the best country. And he sells this mug. And it says made in China on it. And it can't even go in the dishwasher. What kind of piece of garbage. Well, it right tells, that's what it says on the bottom. Made in, What do you expect? It's not made. If it was made in America, you'd be able to be able to put it in anything. In the fire. In hailstorms, in tornadoes. What a douchebag! So I no longer support this guy. I, you know, I'm still gonna drink from them. I'm still gonna use the mug because I paid for it. It was expensive. I think it was like twenty five dollars because I wanted to feel like I was a part of something. Also, okay, I think what got me to actually do it is because of his sob sales pitch tactics. He's a good salesman. I'll give him that. He knows his brand, but he sucks at the quality part. But he's good at selling his victimhood. What a he's good at that. It worked on me. He's like, we're getting banned from YouTube. We're getting canceled. We need your mug club money to support the production because we're not getting any income from YouTube. And like, okay, that makes sense. Uh, now he's getting a shitload of money, so fuck the mug club thing. I mean, I, but I get, I still support the business model of a content producer who's getting canceled from all these mainstream platforms and not getting any revenue. Fine, sell some shitty mugs. But my mugs, they ain't gonna be made in China. They're going to be made in the good old United States of Japan. A better Asian country with higher quality product. They don't skimp. They don't skimp. This microphone has uh, mylar in it. 
from not China. It's not a balloon. It wasn't made, made using the same material as the spy balloon. It's made from this high quality Japan sourced mylar. So you got to thank the Japanese for hearing every little ripple in my voice in pristine 4K 64 kilobits on YouTube. It's better. Anyway, who cares about the. the so J Japan, that's like a, the better version of America. That's like America who they want to, who we should be. They didn't even know about Japan when America was started. They didn't know about Japan. Who the hell heard about Japan in the 1700s? They knew about China because that was a huge empire. But Japan didn't, need, nobody knew about them. They didn't, have, ugh, they didn't have long distance phone calls since like the 40s. That's when Japan came online because Japan minds their own business. They produce high quality equipment. They keep shit good. They have they respect musical instruments. Like you could buy like a vintage guitar and it will be in pristine condition because it's from Japan and they respect musical instruments. They don't just bang them around. Anyway, fuck Steven Crowder. He's a douchebag. I'm still kind of a fan of um nothing about him. Okay, I also you know I like to his uh change my minds. Those were breaking, uh, new, those were like groundbreaking, and they got people to actually think about stuff. Like, not just think about it, but just like, like, do you really think you know so much about this issue? Well, let's see. Change my mind. If you if you're so convinced that abortion or one of these issues is so like immigration, like if you're so convinced that it's racist to not let illegal immigrants in let's see what let's see anyway i liked him for that but i still knew he was a douchebag his personality he's not that funny he sucks at comedy yet he has he tries to make jokes every second and they're obnoxious man and then he gave that dave landau guy a hard time more than a he he was horrible to him but after seeing the video of his wife, who gives a crap? The Dave Landau thing, that didn't even make the news. Who? Oh, he was mean to some unknown comedian. Okay. Then the wife thing comes out with her belly hanging out. He's like, I don't love you. I've never loved you. <laughs> You've never given me love. You're just using me for my... I don't know. I don't know, man. It's got a, he's got, he, she made her baby, whatever, whatever. I'm just repeating what other people, I, my own, I, it's hard to form your own opinion until you see what other people say about it, you know? And my opinion is, I wish him luck. He's a grifter, kind of. Uh, and he's, he's kind of like, uh, Kind of put out better quality mugs and then I'll like them again. You know, everybody has personal problems, professional problems. If the content is good and the mugs are good, that's all. I'll be a fan, but his content's not that good. His content's not that good, man. It's not that good. It was a little good, in a couple, like in small doses. Those skits at the beginning that are super high production, they spend so much like time and rehearsal and script writing on and it's they're not funny all right so that's steven crowder he's uh yeah he's kind of a douchebag but i have a i still have a soft spot for him because every i relate i you know i kind of get where he's coming from he doesn't want his woman be uh taking his car when he wants uh pellets for the grill he just wants to stay home like a bitch like looking after the just sitting there just doing nothing when he wants to get these pellets for the <laughs> you could just get someone to deliver them you could just pay somebody to deliver that anything you want but it's not about that it's about the control he sensed that he was losing control in the marriage she was only having his third baby. 
She wanted to do woman stuff. She wasn't fulfilling her wifely duties, man. I mean, she didn't know. I, now I'm looking at her like, you didn't know who this guy was? You didn't know that you're marrying somebody that wanted you to do wifely duties? Whatever, she she got slapped and now she's going to have to deal with the, the pain of having a dude that's uh, out the picture. Because, of course, that's not going to be a good post-marriage relationship. If that's how it ended, and it was so public, what a douche, what a loser, man. That that type of thing hasn't happened with Trump, surprisingly. And Trump, like, he's been through a lot of embarrassing things, but not since the, the 80s. Okay, you could call the election kind of embarrassing. That was kind of embarrassing. Because he was so confident that he was going to win and that he didn't. Kind of embarrassing, but eh, he, not really, man. He, he's just, he's more like rehearsed at being a narcissist that he's easy to like. Uh, even though he only talks about himself and how great he is. Whatever, he, I, you know, Trump has not had nearly as bad of a fallout but what is going to happen? I mean, he'll either just die. It's I with like this Crowder guy. He's doing he's not just burning out. He's going to fade away. Or he might burn out in a big way. He might like he might like go on a rampage and then fade into obscurity cuz like who would be a fan who would still watch his show after that? There'll still be some hardcore Republicans that take his side and go, yeah, she wasn't doing her womanly duties. There are still a small, there's still like a few million. He'll still have a few million fans. So whatever, but he'll fade away though. Like Howard Stern still has a few hundred thousand fans maybe, if that. Just because they're so hardcore that there's still some of them because it was such a big audience it was literally like 100 million not just like a couple maybe like 50,000 like actual fans and they're all just old generation uh g whatever it is x generation x they're too nah he they're so that's such a small proportion of what he used to have because gen xers they probably just listen to him in, in like small slivers, just these weak mind, these pussy Gen Xers and some boomers that still listen to Howard Stern. He's fading into oblivion, and that's fine. I am fine with that, cause you know what are the what's the alternative? He just stops and he's just retired. That would get boring. That would be sad too. It's like, oh, you just don't do anything. With, what do you do? You just play chess. You do. What do you, you just take? Fo- you just. You're just in your sunset years. I respect a broadcaster that goes until the very end, like that dude. That's that other racist guy. The, that other dude that died a couple years ago. That was super like edgy. Not, not the fat one. Not Limbaugh. I wasn't even thinking of Limbaugh. Limbaugh is another example. He went to the bitter end. He died until his candle burnt out. Now, I'm thinking of that other guy that I can't think of the name of that got blasted in the early 2000s for calling those women, those basketball players, nappy-headed ho. That guy. His name is escaping me, but he's a legend of broadcasting. And he went until the very end, I think. I don't think he ever retired. He was making great money. He was also selling garbage same with Limbaugh. All these right wing, they sell garbage uh, merchandise. Howard Stern does not sell merch, and I respect the shit out of that. See, he's at least, you know, he has a standard for quality in some way. But when it comes to merch, for some reason, he's too good for mer- Okay, he's too good for merch, but the quality of his product, that's fine, though. It's fine to just stick to your format and just. Hold on to it for as long as possible in the safest, most secure way. Just like I want to do 
with this house. I want to keep this house safe from the elements. Whatever, man. We all got our own pirate ships. Anyways, that's number. It's broadcasters, man. Property tax. See, like you always think, if you have a certain amount of money, you'll just never have to worry about money. Like Howard Stern has enough money. He doesn't need to sell merch, and he doesn't. But he still cares about his income, which I don't know. Does he need to? No. But I, I'm starting to understand why people, even if you're super rich, you still, you still got to keep making more. It's like, yeah, I, I could never work. I got enough money to support myself for the rest of my life, forever and ever, and I'm, it's compounding. It's, it's like I'm living off interest and my net worth is growing just because I have so much. It just grows because you already cover so much ground. It's like, well... It's going to grow just like an amoeba taking over another amoeba just more I don't know, it's like this colonization this fungi that just colonizes it's already beaten out enough competition that just by having so much money you're going to have it's going to grow in in proportion to other people's uh, you know other people are just living paycheck to paycheck. They don't even have a concept of like what it's like to even have a net worth. They just have a paycheck and a few things that they need to survive. They got a wardrobe, a little, they got a few clean clothes, a toothbrush. They don't got a net worth. Their net worth is just their next paycheck. And it just goes to rent and food, transportation, cigarettes, whatever vices they have. And that's it. Their net worth never... They don't think about like compound interest or APR of their savings, their yield. No, they see APR in terms of their loans that they're taking out, their credit card APR, their car loan or their mortgage APR. They're not looking at it the way rich people are. What's the APR on your savings? They don't got a concept of that. You got to be a fighter to even have a chance to even accumulate wealth over time. For it to grow over time without trying to even have your foot in that game, you got to already be kind of well off. You got to be making more than you're spending and it's got to be more than... Most people are making in your area, I hope. It's got to be enough to save, to put away. I'm super uh, conscious about that, about saving and budgeting. I wasted a hundred bucks on mosquito spraying yesterday. I got this surf, this, uh, this other service that sprays the perimeter of my house every quarter, four times a year, Hundred bucks a pop plus tax to to just spray for mosquitoes and then it takes two seconds, they come, they leave, and it rains heavy the very next day. So it's gone. All that pr- mosquito spray, it's gone. It got washed away. So I'm a hundred dollars out on that, and it's like, thank you. So that's bad policy for budgeting. That hundred bucks could have been another like trip to the garage or to the grocery store, whatever, man. So I'm very conscious about budgeting right now, and you should be too, unless you don't have enough money where it even matters in the first place. Like, you gotta be making some money. First of all, first step, make money. Second step, budget it, save some enough to invest in the stock market index funds. Not just random stocks, index funds, low-cost index funds, ones that cost like 0.05% a year at the most. Some are free. Let's go on Fidelity. Just sign up for Fidelity. They have free mutual fund index funds that are free of charge. Put your extra... Once you get a job, 
Put it into that, put the extra into that, and don't touch it. Don't look at it. Just auto-invest. Buy it up. Whenever you have extra income, you could let some sit on the sidelines. Let some sit in the cash account on the brokerage. In first, make sure it's an IRA of some kind. Make sure it's some kind of uh, retirement account, like a, like a IRA, a Roth IRA, whatever. That's boring, though, because you can't touch the money until you're 60. But yeah, that's, uh, that's good because you don't got to pay the taxes on it once you do pull it out. But that's retirement, strictly for retirement, not for getting rich quick. The market's not going to go up drastically. You're not going to get rich doing this until you're in your 60s. But anyway, that's bo- that's enough about budgeting, you know. It's enough. Like, I don't know. I'm just starting to get very like I'm starting to get fidgety about this uh, money thing and about how everything's going down in value, not gaining value. Very few things have gained value that I've invested in in the past twelve months. A few cryptos, a few cryptos here and there. My property tax. I did get them to, to uh, I jewed them down on my property tax. Thank, it wasn't hard at all. Here's another racket. Roofing, that's a good business. They probably make a lot of money, but that's not really a racket because you kind of actually have to like crawl onto people's roofs and, you know, go into their attics in the deepest part. So that's a real job. Anyway, but another thing that's not a real, one thing, a thing that's not a real job anything is in capitalism if, if it's profitable it's a real gig Unfor- that's just how it is I have not- there's nothing wrong with that but I'm saying I'm exposing it as something that's not very necessary is these companies speaking of being a homeowner or a property owner in Texas if you have a if you get if you pay property taxes you're going to get these unsolicited letters in the mail from companies businesses that try to save you money on your taxes by contacting the state or the county I don't, I don't know which one whoever is in charge of, of property tax you got they contact them on your behalf and they go hey man this is too high for this guy my client according to this evidence you're overcharging them you're over assessing the value of their property so they send them a nice letter in the email and then if they and then they charge up front fees they charge like a lot of money like 300 bucks or something i don't know i could get the letter but i have to it'd be i could get the stupid letter i got multiple letters from these companies that hey we will help you it looks overrated or overvalued on your bit if we, it, it we will take this much up front like 300 400 whatever dollars and then they say we've successfully got it down for 86 percent of clients like what are you doing that's so magical i know my house is overvalued i got access to the internet i could go to redfin i got google i'm not a boomer I could go to Google and type in my address and then you know what comes up? Multiple websites that tell me the estimated value of my property and it tells me that it's about this much and I could just send that to the Travis County people in I could protest it myself. It took two sec it took it took fifteen minutes. It was very easy. I just sent them a screenshot of uh, Zillow. That's it. That's all I did. And they took it. They, they actually, I guess I, I was being super reasonable. I was like, yeah, can you knock it down by like 15K? And they actually went even lower. For some reason, they actually were like, nah, screw you. You think that's good? I'll give you this. They knocked it down by 40K, the assessed value of my home, which is like 10% lower than what they had. It's not that, that's pretty good, 10%. Hey, I'll take it. And then, I, so that means my, my, so I did it myself. 
And that was accurate. The number that they gave me was accurate. So if I hired this company for $300, that would have just been $300 for something I could have done myself. And I'm glad I didn't hire them. And that's a stupid company, man. That's a stupid business model. Like, it's not stupid. It's I, it's it's clever, but it's it's a it's a obnoxious. I don't like it. It's it's a in disingenuous way to make money from people, because all you gotta do is tell them, hey, you know, all you gotta do is take a screenshot of Zillow, and boom, within a day they'll be like, yep, here you go. You don't gotta be solicited by these scumbags sending unsolicited mail. It's a gross way. To... Roofers don't do that. I go to the roofers. The roofers don't need me. I need them. Anyway, it's like a drug deal. Dealer. Do drug dealers send mailers out? No, they got Telegram for that. They don't knock down your door. Hey, you need weed? Hey, I'm going door to door. Let me stick this in your mailbox. Now, I, if I need a drug dealer, I go to them. Anyway, so that's, a, that's something I figured out. Anyway, and most of the property tax goes to schools, I also found out. Only about a thousand of it goes to the actual county. Lord knows what the county does with it. And then the 4,000 of it goes to schools. I ain't using the schools, so you're welcome, schools. You're welcome, kids. You're welcome. That's four grand worth of something. It just helps the property tax of the schools. It's like, okay, four grand going towards the school's property taxes. They don't care about the students. Okay, another thing really quick about the complaint about being an old man before we wrap this up is my neighbors who used to, they seem like good people, but not until now. <laughs> now I look at them as uh, a nuisance because they put up a uh, four lease sign in their front yard. I've never heard a peep out of these guys. They've never left the house. I've never seen them in their backyard, front yard. I know they live there. They got cars that, that leave the driveway. But I've never met these people. They're ideal neighbors. They take care of their lawn. They got solar power, which looks, that's cool. But now... They're going to lease their house. They're going to become landlords. And, and there goes the neighborhood. Now I got to live next to who knows who. Just some random renters. Who are not going to drain the water heater. Where are they? They're not going to relacquer the granite countertops, which you got to do every year. <laughs> They're going to muck it up. They're going to put all sorts of holes in the walls. And who knows how many fireworks they're going to be popping off. Who knows what they're going to do. They're going to be unresting my rest. Causing unrest in the neighborhood. Because I'm an old man. I'm an owner occupier. I'm an owner and I'm an occupier. That's the best thing you can be. I'm not an investor. I'm a loser. Not making money. I'm a bad investor. That's what I and I'm living in my bad investment. Yeah. It's a vehicle that goes nowhere. And if there's a tornado, which I thought there might be earlier today, because there's a green sky and a bunch of crazy looking clouds and very strong gusts of wind. I was like, why would I just stay here if I could just drive away? Why the hell do they tell people to just stay in their houses during a tornado? What are you going to do in there? What, are you going to hold your stuff down? 
It's like, oh, okay, if I just hold it down. What the hell do you got to stay there for? Just, just drive away. You could outrun a tornado when you, if you see it coming. Just go the opposite direction. Of course I would just drive away. If I saw a funnel cloud coming towards my house. You think I'm just going to huddle up in my closet. And hope I don't get impaled by my own house. And my own belongings. No. I'm going to see it coming. I'm going to be like, okay. Is there another one coming? Okay. Can I make it out of this neighborhood? We'll find out. Because it. Of course, I'm just going to drive away and then I'll come back. I'll go, okay, the house got leveled. Oh, well. Oh, well. At least I got a cool story out of it. And I'll just call my parents up. Oh, well, house got destroyed. Might want to stay with you for a few weeks. Big. That's it. That would be the end of the story. And then I'll just get a new house, new belongings. Who the hell would just stay there like hope they don't die? Do you not have a car? All right, all right. Anyway, that's my plan for tornadoes. Okay, well, this was a fun episode. I was very angry from it. I did not take mushrooms today. Only point one. Just a micro dose. I still felt something from it. It still made me feel funny and giddily and weird. But it wasn't like enough to like actually have an experience that humbled me. So anyway, is that enough? And then crypto, the banks, really quick, I'll end on this. More finance stuff. I invested in a First Republic bank the day it crashed over a month ago in March. Sometime in March, I don't remember. It crashed when all those other banks went out of business. Signature and uh, Silicon Valley Bank. First Republic, it crashed. So I, I, I bought a bunch of shares, and then it kept crashing and crashing, and now it's at $2. So I'm still buying shares. Because, wait, maybe it'll go, I don't know. Like, it's not going to go back up. It's being, uh, it's definitely not looking good. It's, it's going out of business, I'm pretty sure. It's being absorbed by the FDIC. That is not something you want to have happen in your lifetime if you're in a bank, if you're depositing, if you're a customer of a bank, you don't want the FDIC to actually have to do their jobs. I never thought I'd even see that my whole life. So I, I invested in this bank because I was like, you know me, maybe it'll come through. Maybe it'll survive because... It's not like their their business model changed. It's just that people took their money out. Well, that was a bad thing that they took out their money. They took out $100 billion. So I lost some money on that. And that's a humbling thing to learn about stocks. Individual stocks is, eh, is it good to catch a falling knife? Probably not. In crypto, probably same thing. Probably same thing. Crypto's full of so many Ponzi schemes. At best, they're Ponzi schemes, man. That's like what the good ones turn out to be. It's like, oh, you made it out of that one alive. You actually made a profit in crypto? Which Ponzi scheme was it? Was it BitConnect? Which one? Was it uh, that FTX? Which was it that Luna? Terra? Luna coin? Which one did you profit off? Yeah. They all turn out to be Ponzi's or uh, pump and dumps, which are also Ponzi's. They're just not quite the same, but same thing. They 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 scam people into buying into something, and then the person that's been investing before they even told people about it, they they dump whatever. It's the same thing as a Ponzi. Just easier to get away with, and the SEC is starting to hammer down. On these scammers and fraudsters and crypto. There's somebody on the FBI most wanted list. This woman who I'm a fan of. Big fan. I don't know her name. We'll talk more about her on a future episode. She's at large. 
She's worth. She stole billions in a Ponzi scheme for something called, I think, one coin, and she's on the FBI most wanted because she got away with it. It's pretty badass. I wouldn't want to have my name on the most wanted list, so she definitely, like, what did she think she was doing by putting her actual name on her scam project? Like, what are you, nuts? I ran a legit crypto company. I don't even put my name on it. I don't even want to be associated with something that wasn't a scam. Because maybe it is. Maybe I just don't know it yet. But I, I don't know. I know it's not I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not doing it on purpose. But like, she knew it was a scam. My business model was actually like legit. It was an advertising agency platform like Facebook or some thing like that. Advertising is a legitimate business. And it's still... I haven't stole any money from people. And they could still take out their money. Uh, even though I told them they only have until this this long. I'm still extending it because I don't know. I don't want to piss people off. I'm not a fugitive, man. And I, I, I could tell... I could identify myself with that company. But, like, what's the point? People just harass me. So... But big respect to somebody that got away with stealing four billion in crypto and just being somewhere in the world. Where in the world is she? Anywhere. She could go anywhere she wants. Cause she's got enough money to just get away with it. Just bribe people. She probably doesn't even have to bribe people. She just has to tell people, hey. Don't worry about who I am. I got a lot of money. I got a big net worth. So by letting me into your country, it'll help the economy. Who cares who I am? I'm going to check my passport. Don't worry about the passport. She could afford a fake passport. So big ups to this woman. I'm not trying to be her. I want to be like Warren Buffett, man. I want to be a public dude that gets his, that gets his dick sucked. For just making other people rich in a non-Ponzi way. The opposite of a Ponzi. But also kind of not kind of similar. It has similarities to a Ponzi in the sense that the first people to get in are doing the best. But he's not stealing money. He's not uh, lying to people. He's not defrauding people. And he's not pulling out. He's not dumping his shares. He goes to McDonald's. He, can have, he doesn't have to sell any shares. He could sell one share and have it be enough to live off the rest of his life. Anyways, that's a bit of a good episode. That's about it. We covered that crypto. Everything's going sideways. So I, I want to think of a business model, a new one, one that's easier to pull off, that's also clever, like the first one I did that was successful. But I, yeah, I, I'm hungry for income, man. But these staking platforms, there's always a catch with staking, with like being a, a a validator on Ethereum. That's not bad. It pays about four or five percent to be a lick uh, a, a validator on Ethereum. It costs about sixty thousand dollars to buy in, and then you gotta run a server that costs money, and you gotta hope that the price goes up. It's a deflationary coin. So that's a good one to, to have. It's good to have Ethereum. It's probably a good one to, to DCA into as an investment vehicle because it has utility, you know, more than Bitcoin. And a big development, has. it's just a very, uh, it has a good future, but that's it's still a crypto. It's still just a crypto. What does it solve? What real life problems are it solving? Well, you still need a bank to live off crypto. So it still hasn't solved all the problems. And, it, you know, it's not anonymous. Even if it is, the the government will prevent it from being used anonymously. You can't unbank yourself. That's There's always some central entity that you are relying on to, unless you just go to another, I mean, you could, there's things you can do to mitigate the U.S. government from interfering with that because the U.S. government is strict when it comes to crypto. 
So my plan, my escape plan, is to move to some other country. It doesn't even have to be a good country. It just has to be one that I don't hate. It just has to be a f- cool country that's fun, that has you know that I would enjoy as a white um, expat, and with a good banking system, and good crypto laws, which means hopefully none. Hopefully zero crypto laws and zero crypto taxes. That'd be great to just have zero crypto taxes. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm realistic. I don't mind paying taxes. But if Warren Elizabeth, the other Warren, the opposite of the bad kind, the evil Warren Elizabeth gets her way, she will lock down every wallet And make crypto just not have any utility in America unless you go through this bullshit. It would just completely deflate the price of crypto in America. It would completely close the sector. For any, I mean, yeah, you know, I get, you know, screw that. I'm a crypto guy. I go hard on crypto. I think I'm trying to think of a way to make it useful. And I'm being realistic. I, so far, I haven't really thought of nothing. Besides the thing I already did in 2018 to 2021, the advertising platform. That's a brilliant idea. That was useful. But I was just using it for payments. It's not like I really needed it. It just made it a lot easier to get my business off the ground. And it opened the adoption to other people. I got a lot of people to use crypto who've never used it before. I don't know how many. It's in the thousands. It's a lot. Anyway, I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm, I'm a net positive to this world. Screw Steven Crowder. He could be on my podcast, but not in person. Only through, I don't want him in my house. Unless he brings his ex-wife. No, that'd be awkward. That'd be awkward. I'll be their marriage counselor. That guy's a, He's too domineering for me. I don't like domineering men. I want to be a meek domineering man. I want to dominate people from behind the keyboard. That's how I get my power. That's how I get my rocks off. I abuse people by writing malicious code on the blockchain. Now, that's gross, but I I should learn about that. I don't know nothing about smart contracts. I should probably learn about that. Learn about the Layer 2 protocols that are all the rage still. I don't know if they have any underlying utility other than building hype for self-fulfilling prophecies and pump and dumps. I don't know if there's any utility yet, but... it's It's fun. It's a fun thing to do as a hobby... Is follow these crypto projects, these layer twos. And if the market comes back, if there's another bull run, the sell pressure will be punching me in the gut. It'll be, I'll be selling on the bag hold. I'll be selling, I'll be taking profits aggressively and then putting them in the banks, putting them in FRC stock and other banks, which I trust because the FDIC We'll always bail them out. Gotta be careful with your money, man. Spread it around. Don't just have it in one thing. Don't just have it in one crypto exchange. I mean, that'd be insane. Don't have it in one ledger even. Put it in different wallets and and put them in places that only you could get into. Good luck. It's not easy. You'll probably get stabbed in the back by somebody. The more money you have and the more public you are, somebody's going to stab you in the back or straight up murder you and steal your money. And even if you are rich, there's still other things in life that matter, (laughs) like sleep apnea. We didn't even talk about that. I got a new sleep mask. I got a new sleep apnea mask, which is a small... It's more like easy to... It's less uh, uncomfortable. 
But uh, we didn't have time to cover that, so that's where we're going to end the episode. It's already a bit long here. So thank you very much for tuning in to Tim Weitzelbaum Show. I'll see you all next week. Support me out of your favorite. Support me by uh, pressing the like button, especially if you watch the whole thing. Thank you. Peace out.